Hello, it's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about 3.40 in the afternoon on Monday, the 9th, 8th of May. I'm recording this for release uh, the morning of 9th of May. I will be out of the office next on Tuesday, so I'm recording this a day early. I want to talk about platinum and palladium. Uh, it's time. It's, it's been a while since we talked about them on these videos, and various people have asked uh, us to, to update it. Um, there's various talk about supply issues, especially longer-term issues related to South African production. And I'll come back and talk about that a little while later. Uh, our view on the price of platinum and palladium is that these supply issues, not only in South Africa, but in Zimbabwe and Russia and the United States now with uh, some supply disruptions, uh, are important but that uh, the fabrication side of the market is probably even more important. Uh, and we're seeing some issues that are positive or negative for both platinum and palladium, and we're seeing some issues that jive uh, either way. Uh, with both metals, you're seeing weaker auto sales, uh, and that is a headwind to rising platinum and, and palladium prices. Uh, one of the reasons is the economic the state of the economy in many countries. Uh, there probably are also some demographics changing. Uh, people are moving away from auto ownership and buying autos as, as often as they had in industrialized countries. Uh, the desire to own autos is still very uh, high in industrializing uh, or developing countries or emerging markets. And, and, and that is offsetting the decline in some of the industrialized uh, countries to some extent. But you're seeing weaker growth, if not outright contraction year to year on a longer term basis in the auto industry. In addition to that, um, engines that burn petroleum products, diesel or gasoline, are losing market share to electric vehicles. I think electric vehicles were about 10 or percent of Vehicles sold last year, they're about 11% projected for this year. That's a tenth of the market uh, for the platinum, palladium, and rhodium that goes in the auto catalysts um, that has disappeared over the last several years. Um, so that has eaten into the fabrication demand for platinum and palladium. And platinum and palladium basically are industrial metals. Um, they're called precious metals. Uh, chemists would call them noble metals in that... Uh, they're like gold and silver. They're not uh, eaten up by many acids. You need aqua regia to, to dissolve these metals. Uh, so they're really noble metals, uh, but people call them precious metals. But it's really fabrication demand uh, over, over investment demand. There is a lot of investment demand. There's a lot of platinum and palladium that is held historically by investors. Uh, it's an issue that the platinum industry itself was not particularly aware of or fully aware of the extent to which people owned, investors owned uh, large amounts of platinum and palladium. You know, maybe a decade ago, there there was uh, some, not quite a decade ago, 2013, 14, 15, there was some skepticism, but I think that e developments over the last eight years have sort of driven home the idea that, yeah, there's a lot of metal out there. And a lot of sophisticated investors actually own the metal in sponge or powder form in uh, Swiss vaults uh, because rather than in bars or, or ingots or plates, as they're sometimes called in the platinum group market. Anyway, our view of platinum is that we've seen the price trade basically between 800 and 1,000 for most of the time since late 2015, early 2016. It's been starting to try to break out of that since 2021. And, uh, you know, you saw a surge up to 1300. It came back down to eight, 900 uh, in late 2021. It went back up to 1200 when Russia invaded Ukraine. But then it came back down and it came all the way back down to 800 uh, in the second half of last year. Right now, I think the price of palladium, platinum is about $1,090 today um, and and it, it, it is moving higher. CPM Group's view is that the price of platinum does have the capacity to rise over the next several years and that we have been expecting the price to break out of that 800 to to $1,000 range and move into a higher ranges 
1400 is really the important price at which uh, some longer term investors will start looking at platinum again. But you know, our expectation is that over the next year or so, you'll see the price continue to test breaking above that thousand and 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 moving higher. Well, would it be surprised to see the price of platinum fall back to nine hundred dollars during the summer months? Uh, and if we see a recession that really hurts auto production and sales, we could see uh, nine hundred dollars. But we think that nine hundred dollars is is trying to be established as a base uh, for the platinum price with higher prices later. Although uh, a recession could interrupt that, um, platinum and palladium, as I said, are sharing headwinds, shrinking auto market, uh, weaker auto sales, uh, and losing market share to electric vehicles. Within that shrinking market, and the auto industry is the major use, more than half of platinum and palladium goes into to catalytic converters to clean up uh, auto exhaust. Within that shrinking market, you are seeing a shift back to more platinum and less palladium in auto catalysts. So that's a benefit for platinum, and it is a support for higher platinum prices in the long run. Uh, unfortunately for palladium, it's a, a, a sign of a potential weakness in the prices on the longer run because it's losing market share to platinum. Uh, this is our platinum market balance, persistent surpluses. I think seven of the last 47 years, we've seen deficits, and they usually related to, they were usually related to um, specific events, like the 2014 strike in South Africa and uh, some things going on in Russia in the late, late 1990s. Um, so while there are people who promote platinum to investors who say that there's persistent deficits, if you don't include dummy variables for investment man, if you measure the balance properly, which is total supply, mine production and secondary recovery of old scrap, minus fabrication demand, what you find is persistent surpluses. Now, back in the 80s and early 90s, you saw persistent surpluses, and those were largely absorbed by South African producers to support the price. After the change of government in 1993, the South African producers stopped doing that, and you had this long period of time of relatively balanced markets. In the period after 2000, 2001, you saw another period of large surpluses, and those were not South African producers. Those were investors, and they were bidding the price higher. And you can see that with this black line, which is the price of platinum. In the period of large surpluses in the 80s and early 90s, the price was flatlining to moving lower. In the period of large surpluses in the period 2002 to 2012, 2013, you know, uh, saw the price rise sharply. The difference is that you know, producers sopping up excess liquidity in the physical market doesn't necessarily drive the price higher, but investors saying, I want to own platinum, and I'd like to have sponge in, in Switzerland, uh, they'll bid the price up, and they did, up until 2011. Uh, and then they started to sell some, and you saw the price come down. So since 2000. 16, we've seen relatively smaller, but again, persistent surpluses. And we expect that to diminish over the next several years. Talked about South African supply. South African producers are now talking about very large declines in production over the next uh, period of time. CPM Group expects large declines in South African production, not necessarily this year or next year or even in 2025, but in the next, say, three to five years or 10 years, we think that you will see South African production fall, perhaps not as sharply as some of the South African uh, projections have it, but a significant decline, you know, perhaps 10%, perhaps more. Uh, and that that will be one of the factors supporting higher prices. 
along with that continued shift away from palladium to platinum, which will tighten fabrication, increase fabrication demand and tighten the supplies. So we wouldn't be surprised to see deficits emerge in the platinum market over the next 10 years. We don't expect them in the next one or two years, however. So we're looking at prices continuing to try to move out of that $800 to $1,000 range uh, into something higher, but we're not necessarily looking for it to move sharply higher yet. One other chart on platinum. A lot of platinum is used in larger commercial vehicle uh, catalytic converters. These are diesel vehicles. They tend to be platinum intense, and they tend to be much larger vehicles, so trucks or lorries and uh, larger buses. And you can see here, this is the year-to-date commercial vehicle sales growth in major industrialized markets. China actually has seen a small reduction in, in the first quarter of this year, but the United States uh, saw more than 10% growth in large vehicle sales, uh, trucks, you know, tractor trailers, large trucks, uh, and um, buses. Europe saw a little bit more than 10%, and Japan a little bit less than 10%. So that has helped the platinum fabrication demand, and it's helped tighten the supply, and it's helped uh, support the price. Turning to palladium, and this chart, I'm sorry, only goes back to 2019. Uh, you know, the price of platinum at $1,200 in the beginning of, of 2019 was a record price for platinum or for palladium. Uh, and it continued to rise really into 2022. Uh, there was that one peak in early 2021. The price came down. And then when Russia invaded Ukraine, the price spiked up and it's come back down. Today, it's around $1,560. That's close to the top of the range that CPM Group expects for palladium prices over the next three months or so. We wouldn't be surprised to see the price continue to decline over the summer months. We wouldn't be surprised to see $1,300 or $1,200 per ounce over the next three months uh, as, as, as a low for palladium prices. Um, and again, you know, as I said, palladium is losing market share to platinum. And that's one of the reasons why you've seen the price really declining now for the last year and a half. South African production I've talked about. I haven't talked about Russian production. It seems to be off a little bit. Uh, South Africa, Russian platinum group metals have not come under sanctions from Europe, the United States, and other countries. Uh, because the auto industries desperately need these metals in order to make and sell the cars uh, that are very important to, to the economies in Europe, the United States, South Korea, Japan. So we don't expect sanctions to be applied. But the sanctions on imports of various goods and, uh, that are, and chemicals that are needed to mine and, and refine PGMs, and the sanctions on Russian banks have caused uh, problems and, and static and, and, and strictures on the South, uh, on the Russian platinum and palladium mining, smelting, and refining industries. So there has been some tightening there. We don't think it's going to be too big. And then again, it's really on the fabrication side that we pay the most attention and fabrication demand has been relatively weak because of weakness in the auto industry, because of loss of market share to electric vehicles, and because of palladium's market loss, uh, share of loss to platinum. With palladium, large balance, uh, surpluses in the early audits absorbed by investors, they diminished over time by 2012, 2013. You had a market that was roughly in balance. You had a few years of deficits, which happen to coincide with these years of high prices. Uh, and then we've had uh, larger surpluses over the last couple of years. And, and that probably is going to continue. And those surpluses may actually get larger over the next several years, the next five to 10 years, which should uh, be expected to apply downward pressure on the prices. That's about all I have about PGMs right now. I will say that we do have our PGM yearbook 
coming out in the middle of July. It's $160, and it has supply, demand, and price information and market information on platinum, palladium, as well as rhodium. And it has a few pages on iridium, ruthenium, and osmium in the back. Uh, those of you who have listened to us for years know that we are very cautious about only the most sophisticated investors getting involved in the non-exchange traded metals, including rhodium, ruthenium, and iridium. And when we do get invest, it's, uh, investors who want to invest in those things, we tend to manage those positions for them to assure the best possible outcome when it comes time to sell the metal. Also, in buying uh, metal efficiently. So, for example, advising uh, institutional investors and high net worth individuals after 2000 into 2007 to buy platinum and palladium sponge rather than bars because in two of the three scenarios in which you're going to be selling your platinum group metals, sponge should have a higher premium relative to bars. So, you, you know, when you're looking to buy, you want to think about looking at what the market conditions might be when you sell. And if you look at the market conditions under which you might want to sell, you probably want to have sponge instead of bars, if you are a large enough investor and sophisticated enough investor. So we have the platinum yearbook coming up. Some of these slides today uh, were derived, actually all of the slides came from our monthly precious metals advisory. We did our May Precious Metals Advisory. It came out last week, uh, and that's where I, I stole those those five slides. Uh, so the Precious Metals Advisory, which has gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and rhodium, uh, supply, demand, price, outlook, next three months, the next two years, uh, that's a subscription order. And then we've also added platinum and palladium trade recommendations to our trade recommendation program. So we now supply any of our retail investor clients or other larger clients who want them, we will supply them with the short, short-term uh, gold, silver, platinum, and palladium trade recommendations. So that's an enhancement to the trade recommendation program that we started. That's all I've got for now. I will be back on Friday, and we'll talk then. In the meantime, you can go to cpmgroup.com and read about our stuff, buy our reports, pre-order the Platinum Yearbook, order the Silver Yearbook, which we're going to be releasing next Tuesday, the 16th of May. You can also sign up to participate in the online briefing next Tuesday for the Silver Yearbook, as well as pre-ordering it. And you can buy our, our 2023 uh, Gold Yearbook, which we released at the end of March. Take care of yourself, take care of everybody around you, and try to do something good for the world. I'll talk to you on Friday.